In this video, we're diving into four key parts of Mississippi John Hurt's guitar style. John Hurt is my absolute favorite country blues artist, partly because of his warm personality that just draws you in, and it really comes across in his music, and honestly, when I listen to his stuff, it just always puts a smile on my face. But don't mistake the laid-back delivery of his music for easy guitar playing. He was quite a skilled picker, and he certainly left generations of guitarists with a few finger-picking challenges. So let's get into one of the main cornerstones of his playing, alternating bass. Mississippi John Hurt used his thumb without a thumb pick to thump out a nearly constant bass line that gave the tunes a perfect foundation for bright melody and little bits of fancy picking, which we're gonna cover later. Now, you need to train your thumb's ability to play on the beat, but we're not talking about just pumping out a single bass note on one string. He rarely stayed on one string for the entire bass line. Instead, he would alternate between two and sometimes three of the lower strings. Take this example from Coffee Blues. Notice how my thumb kept going back and forth between two strings. The first part was between strings five and four, and you're gonna hear me call this the five four alternation or the five four alternating bass line in my lessons. So the five four alternation is all about the thumb going back and forth between the fifth string and the fourth string. And the count is important here. It's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's right on every beat. Now this works great when playing a chord that's rooted on the fifth string with the notable exception of D major like we just saw whose root is really on the fourth string but that open fifth string the A note sounds great as a bass note because it's actually in the chord D major. But then as the progression moves into E major we see the bass pattern switch to a different alternation. This time it's a 6-4 alternation. So here I'm holding down an E which the root is on the sixth string open and we just go back and forth between the sixth and the fourth string. That's the six, four alternation. Six, four, six, four. Those are the string numbers. We count the beats like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Patterns like this are helpful because knowing them will help you recognize them in songs, which will help you learn the song faster. But similar to the old adage that rules are meant to be broken, so are patterns. There are definitely times in Mississippi John Hurt's material where you'll break these strict alternating bass patterns. Here's an example of a departure from the expected 5-4 pattern in Candyman, where we stay on the fourth string for beat three. So we have a 5-4-4-4 pattern, if you will. Or in Avalon Blues, where he incorporates a third string bass note with a 6-3 thumb pattern. So start developing your alternating bass technique until it's nearly automatic. That will help you go far with Mississippi John Hurt's music, but be ready for those tricky curveballs when you need to break the pattern. Of course, Hurt's music is more than just bass playing. His bass lines give the song a strong beat, but he also plays catchy and easy to sing melodies that are really the main focus of his songs. In a lot of cases, the melody that Hurt plays on the guitar matches the vocal melody note for note. We hear this in Hurt's rendition of the hymn, Blessed Be the Name, and the murder ballad, Lewis Collins. In other cases, the guitar melody shines through as a bit of a compliment to the vocal melody. Real quick, if you wanna learn how to play the music of Mississippi John Hurt, I've got four in-depth song tutorials that you should definitely check out. These lessons come with step-by-step -step instructions, a special player that lets you slow down or repeat parts of the performance videos, and exact tabs meticulously written out by an absolute pro transcriptionist, Dylan Hoey. If you wanna dive into these tutorials, join my BGI using the link in the description. Now, let's talk about one of the most impactful parts Parts of Mississippi John Hurd's technique, syncopation. Syncopation is all about breaking expectations. We expect important melody notes to be played right on the beat, but we often hear Mississippi John Hurt play the melody notes offbeat. 
Here's a quick example. I've got an E major on the fretboard and I'm doing a 6-4-6-4 six, four, six, four alternating bass line. That's the steady beat. But now I'm gonna play a simple melody right on top of the beat. It might sound like this. Let's do it again. Now we're gonna syncopate that and play the melody notes in between. straight one more time and here it is syncopated this rhythmic technique gives the song a forward momentum and it really helps even the simplest melodies pop one of my favorite examples of syncopation is in Candyman. You're going to hear this rhythmic technique throughout the tune for sure, but one of my favorite spots is in the guitar break where Mississippi John Hurt just really gets after it. When you get your thumb locked into the beat and then layer on a crisp syncopated melody, you're most of the way there to dialing in Mississippi John Hurt's picking style, but there's one element that is often overlooked, speed. Hertz picking could be quite quick at times. I mean, Coffee Blues is an all-out speed run, clocking in at around 200 beats per minute. That's a blistering pace to keep while making sure that you don't tie your fingers in knots. So if you struggle to play songs like this at full speed, then slow things down. There's absolutely no shame in knocking off 20 BPMs from the tempo. It still sounds good. And as your fingers get to know the part, they get to know their place and they fall at the right time, then begin to increase the tempo. But keep this in mind. We're not aiming to play fast just for the sake of playing fast. I don't think that was Mississippi John Hurt's goal. There's more to it than that in his music. In songs like Coffee Blues, the speed is really contrasted beautifully with his soft voice. And this balance, to me, takes a lot of skill and good taste to make it sound right. And that is, in part, what makes Hurt's music so cool, at least to me. I dig it. I hope this is helpful to you and I hope it helps you focus your efforts when it comes to learning his brilliant material. If you want some help, you should definitely join my BGI right over here. We dig in deep in the four in-depth Mississippi John Hurt song lessons in the library, which by the way, there are over 60 other step-by-step -step courses there aimed at helping you play great acoustic blues. I hope to see you inside my BGI. Until then, practice smart and play on.